In this W1 Game Creator video tutorial series, we'll be going over the basics of using the engine, from detailing what each of the main editors do, to learning how to create your very first game with NPCs and quests. In this second part, we'll be looking specifically at maps, providing an overview of the map editor itself, detailing what each of the options in the map properties and map environment windows do, and learning how to paint tiles on your maps. First and foremost, a map is the play area that the player directly interacts with. Players will typically control a character and interact with various objects. Some of these interactions may include picking up items, talking with NPCs, or battling enemies. The map editor is made up of several tools and options to help bring your ideas to life. You can access the map editor by selecting a map from the map interface panel in the bottom left corner of the screen. By default, upon opening a map, the draw tool will be selected. To navigate around your map, you can either use the scroll bars located at the bottom and right of the main window, or by clicking and holding the middle mouse button and dragging your cursor around the map. You can change which layer you are currently editing by pressing the page up and page down keys, or by holding the control key while scrolling the mouse wheel. We'll now go over what each of the map tools do. The pointer tool is used to move and modify objects on a map. This includes actors, timers, doors, items, lights, speakers, zones, blocking, and comments. We'll cover what each of these objects do a little later on in this video tutorial. By double clicking any of these objects, with the pointer tool selected, you can alter its properties. You can also right click objects to open a context menu where you can perform actions such as cutting, copying, pasting, and deleting, as well as moving objects to a different map layer where appropriate. The options in the panel to the left of the main window can be used to change how the pointer tool interacts with objects, such as whether it should move, rotate, or scale them on selection. The draw tool is used to place tiles on a map. The options to the right of the tile set picker can be used to flip tiles, draw different tile shapes, draw lines of tiles, fill an entire area with a selected tile, or erase tiles. Tiles are placed on a 32 by 32 pixel grid on the map. However, various methods can be used to either place tiles outside the grid, or change the appearance size of the grid at runtime. Tiles can also have collisions, which are defined areas that the player cannot move through. Each tile is a part of a tile set, which is basically a palette that you can use to paint your maps with. Tiles can also be animated, however they cannot change position on the map. Tiles are also divided into one of four categories, floors, lower objects, upper objects, and walls. Floor tiles are displayed underneath the player. These include ground textures, like grass, dirt, water, and paths. They're also used to form the roofs of wall tiles. Lower object tiles are placed on top of floor tiles. There are many different ways these tiles can be rendered, such as lying flat so that the player can walk over them, like flowers on the ground, or standing tall so that the player can walk behind them, like a tree or a table. Unlike floor tiles, lower object tiles can have collision to prevent the player from walking through them. Upper object tiles are placed on top of lower object tiles. They share all of the same properties as a lower object, with the exception that they cannot have collision. These types of tiles are commonly used as decorative pieces, such as having a painting hanging on a wall, or having a small cup placed on a table. Lastly, wall tiles are used to create physical boundaries that the player cannot cross. They consist of a wall graphic and a roof graphic, a floor tile used for the top of the wall. These are typically used to make houses, interior spaces, and platforms and ground in a platform game. Wall tiles fill an entire tile space, a 32 by 32 by 32 pixel area, and can be multiple tiles tall. You can use the slider, which appears to the right of the tile set picker when the walls tab is selected, to adjust the height of your walls. The map dimensions tool is used to resize the map by inserting or removing rows, columns, and layers. By moving your mouse cursor over your map, you can see a visual guide of where you are inserting or removing from. You can also resize a map by clicking and dragging on one of the map's edges, or by editing its width, height, and depth values inside the map properties window. The actor tool is used to place actors on a map. Unlike tiles, actors are not bound by a map's 32 by 32 pixel grid, and can in fact be placed at any position. However, it's worth pointing out that actors are more performance intensive than tiles, meaning if you were to create a map entirely out of actors, it would result in your game running significantly slower than an equivalent map made out of tiles. Actors are mostly used to create NPCs that the player can interact with, or enemies for them to fight, and are typically controlled by a player or artificial intelligence 
but they can also be used as a means of placing details on a map, such as particle effects or animations. The Actor Root tool is used to assign a movement route to an actor. They're particularly useful for creating predefined paths that an actor will follow. Actor routes come in two forms, tile-based and direct point. A tile-based route is essentially a list of steps that the actor will follow in sequence. The actor will follow these steps precisely, and the only way it can be interrupted is by scripting the actor to move differently, or, if it has artificial intelligence enabled, chooses to move on its own. A direct point route, on the other hand, is kind of like drawing an invisible line from a starting location to the next point, allowing the actor to navigate without following a specific pre-planned path. The advantage to this is that if there are objects in the way, the actor will attempt to navigate around them in order to reach their destination. Whereas with a tile-based route, if the path is blocked, the actor will simply stop moving altogether. The timer and spawn tool is used to place timers on a map. A timer can be used to run a script continuously at set intervals, and can also be used to respawn an actor once it has been defeated, or continuously spawn multiple actors. The door tool is used to place doors on a map. These are objects that can be placed on wall tiles to create an opening that players and NPCs can walk through. Doors can require a key or item in order to open, or require a passcode. The item pickup tool is used to place items on a map. Items are objects that actors can hold and use. These include weapons and armor that a player can equip, as well as consumable items, such as a potion to restore a player's health. The placed item will be automatically added to the player's inventory when the player walks over it, and there are options to determine if the item should respawn after a set amount of time, or if the item should be placed inside a treasure chest that the player must open first before they receive the item. The light tool is used to place lights on a map. Lights are a great way of bringing your maps to life, and there are a variety of animation presets to choose from. So whether you're looking for a soft glow or a creepy flicker, Double One Game Creator's dynamic lighting system has you covered. You can position lights at any coordinate on your map, as well as tint the light with various colors, and even adjust its sharpness to provide harder or softer edges. In order for your lights to be visible, you'll need to ensure that the sun color is set to something other than white. You can change the sun color from within the map environment window. The speaker tool is used to place speakers on a map. Speakers allow you to place sound effects within a set radius and can gradually fade in or out depending on how far away the player is to the source. Just like lights, they can be placed at any coordinate on your map and there are a variety of presets available to adjust how the sound effect is played. The zone tool is used to create defined areas on a map that run scripts once certain conditions have been met. Zones can also be used to block an actor's path and you can even specify which actor templates are allowed to pass through and which can't. There are two types of zones you can create, rectangle zones and polygon zones. To create a rectangle zone, simply click and drag to highlight an area you wish to cover. To create a polygon zone, first select the polygon shape icon in the panel to the left, and then click on your map to create different points. Once finished, double click to finalize the zone. You can then use the pointer tool to more precisely adjust the zone shape. We recommend using rectangle zones over polygon zones wherever possible, since they impact performance less. The blocking tool is used to create defined areas on a map that actors cannot pass. Similar to zones, there are both rectangle and polygon blocking shapes. The way you create both of these is identical to how zones are created. We recommend using blocking sparingly though. Instead, you should utilize other methods of blocking actors such as using the collision options in a tile set, as this will yield better performance. The comment tool is used to create comments on a map. Comments are convenient ways of leaving notes for yourself while working on your game. The player does not see these notes and cannot interact with them in any way. Play map is used to position the player actor at the selected location and runs your game from said location. The introduction system trigger is ignored. Test map is similar to play map, except it also allows you to pass additional scripting before your game starts. The script being executed will be displayed inside a script editor window after you select a location. This script will be saved, so you don't have to set it up every time you click test map. Before we move on, let's take a quick look at the display toolbar directly underneath the map toolbar and what these buttons do. Animate animations place all of the animations present on the map, including tiles animations and actor animations. Enable lighting and fog toggles any lights present 
along with any fog effects that have been set. Enable clouds and rain toggles any weather effects present on the map. Enable music and speakers plays any musical sound effects present on the map. Enable grid toggles a visual grid that more clearly shows each individual map tile. Snap to grid toggles grid snapping, allowing you to position objects off the grid. These objects include actors, items, lights, speakers, zones, and blocking. Visualize layers cycles between three display modes that change how the map looks based on which layer you're currently on. Opaque shows all of the layers and is how players will see the map. Transition colors layers based on if they're higher or lower than the current layer, and transparent shows only the current layer. Enable zones and blocking toggles the visibility of any zones and blocking present on the map. Enable icons toggles the visibility of icons placed over objects, like actors and timers, as well as light and speaker radiuses and actor routes. Lastly, the zoom drop down menu allows you to zoom in and out of the map. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. Now let's take a look at the map properties and map environment windows. You can access both of these by clicking their respective buttons inside the map editor, or by right clicking the map from the map interface panel in the bottom left corner of the screen. You can also select map from the main menu at the top to access these windows. Let's start with the map properties window. This is where you give your map a name, adjust its size, set a camera view to change how the map is displayed, and specify how the engine will process the map, as well as set up map boundaries and connections, which determine if the player can collide with the map's edges, and whether or not the player will be transported to another map upon crossing the map's edges. There's also a player entered trigger that runs a script whenever the player first enters the map, as well as the ability to create map variables, which are variables that are assigned to that map only. The map environment window is where you can adjust various visual aspects of a map, such as adjusting its background color, setting up parallax backgrounds and foregrounds, changing the sun color and wind direction, as well as enabling weather effects like fog, rain and snow, and clouds. You can also have the background music change when the player enters the map, and free the camera from the map edge to allow the camera to freely travel in any direction. With all of that explanation out of the way, let's get to painting tiles. Upon opening a map, the draw tool will be selected by default. This will show the tile set picker to the left of the screen. From here, you can choose a floor, lower object, up object, or wall tile. Then, select a tile set from the box below. You can move your mouse cursor over each tile set to see a preview of it. Once a tile set is selected, simply click on which tile you would like to place on your map. Then pick one of the tile brushes to the right of the tile set picker and left click on your map to place the tile. For the shape and line tile brushes, click and drag to create the desired shape. For wall tiles, the mouse cursor will change to show you how tall the wall is. You can select several tiles from the tile set picker by clicking and dragging while moving your mouse cursor over more than one tile. This is particularly useful for placing objects that span across multiple tiles. You may also notice that some tiles, like the trees in the environment lower object tile set, are represented by single 32x32 32 32 pixel tiles in the tile set picker, but actually span multiple tiles when placed. By inserting a larger graphic inside a 32x32 32 32 pixel tile, you can more easily overlap tiles without needing to place them on separate map layers. By right clicking a tile on your map, you can capture the tile your mouse cursor is over. This will only work if the tile is of the same tile layer you're currently on. If no appropriate tile is present, it will automatically switch to the Erase tool instead. You can also right click and drag to select multiple tiles to capture, similar to how you can select multiple tiles from the tile set picker. It's important to keep in mind that you can only overwrite or erase a tile if you have the correct tile layer tab selected. For example, you can only overwrite a lower object with another lower object. Tiles can also be placed on separate map layers. To do this, you can either press the page up and page down keys or hold the control key while scrolling the mouse wheel. The cursor, displaying which tile you have selected, will change depending on which layer you're currently on. The bottom of the blue vertical line represents the X and Y position where the tile is located. The longer the line is, the higher the Z position. You can use map layers to place objects on top of each other to build platforms or add depth to your 2D games. This is especially useful when placing objects on top of a wall or stacking lower objects. To figure out which layer a tile is on, you can use the Visualize Layers button on the display toolbar. 
This concludes the second part of our video tutorial series detailing the basics of Dublon Game Creator. In the next part, we'll be looking at actors, doors, items, and lights, providing a more detailed overview of each of these objects and how they're used when making your games.